So this is a little different from what I would normally do. I just had this thought and thought it was really interesting because I've been thinking about like how I would have reacted to me when I was a Christian. And that would be to completely shut out all arguments. Um, and I mean, try to argue without actually understanding because I mean, that's just how uh, <clears throat> I was taught to like well, not how I was taught, but how I always, uh, you know, used apologetics. I wouldn't try to um, respond to their arguments. I would, like, what word am I looking for? I would try to reconcile what I thought happened with what actually happened. For instance, you know, evolution. Evolution definitely 100% did happen. We have proof of it. But uh, I thought that that was impossible because I was a young Earth creationist. Um, because I thought that the view of, or I thought old Earth creationism just didn't make any sense. So I've been trying to think how you could reconcile faith, um, or people, of, how you could convince people of faith that science is reputable, uh, trustable, and makes sense, right? So, um, I, so, basically, would it matter if Jesus existed, right? Um, let's, let's assume for a sec that let's let's go through what what Christians think, right? Jesus was born, actually, real person born, two thousand ish years ago, as of recording this video, because um, that's going to be relevant. Uh, <laughs> and then he, you know, grew up, did all the things, didn't sin though, so he didn't do all the things. Uh, and then he died uh, on the cross as a sacrifice. And in that moment, God used his sacrifice to atone for the sins of all humanity who repented. Um, at least that's how I saw it. Some people think that all of humanity is saved. Um, some people, I don't, I don't remember exactly what the Bible says, but I'm pretty sure you have to, like, accept Jesus as your savior or whatever to be saved. Anyway, let's pretend for a second. Uh, well, I mean, pretend, quote unquote. Let's assume for a second that Jesus never existed. Would you be able to reconcile your faith in Christianity if it was 100% irrefutably proven that Jesus never existed? Um, and would it would it matter, right? So, first of all, I, proof like that isn't possible, I don't think. Um, but even if it was, there would be a lot of people who just wouldn't take it, who would just completely refuse to believe it, right? Um, and that's, I mean, I get that. I was in that boat at one point but uh how would people reconcile it there are christians i believe who don't think jesus is real or um i don't know they, they go with there are other religions also that don't think jesus was the son of god but he was instead like you know um like just a really cool guy uh, with good teaching stuff like that but if jesus didn't exist would it matter and honestly, if I was a Christian who valued knowledge over anything else, or sorry, truth over anything else, which you're supposed to do, I'm pretty sure it says that in the Bible somewhere, um, then I don't think it would matter. Because for, for a second, let's, let's go with the metaphorical view of the Bible in terms of, that's what this will be about, the medical, metaphorical view of the Bible. That's, that's, that's how I'll <laughs> qualify this video. Um, so for instance, with evolution, the the earth or the according to the bible adam and eve were the first two people on the earth um and from there you know they had children who had children who had children up to all of the people who exist on earth today um but according to science uh earth has been around for billions millions it's been around for a lot of years a lot more than six thousand um which is approximately what the Bible says if you add up all the ages and the genealogies, right? So, uh, so how, how do you reconcile that, right? And most people do it by saying that the Bible isn't literal. Uh, God could have used parables. He could have used um, metaphors. He could have used, I was going to say similes, but I guess not really. <laughs> um, so when God says, when the Bible says that the, the earth was made in six days, it wasn't literally made in six days. These things happened over millions of years, not necessarily in the order 
that the Bible says even. It was just um, basically the, the, how, I, how I would see it if I was, if I still wanted to hold my faith, but I realized that science makes sense. Um, I would reconcile it by saying that it was a parable made to help ancient people come to terms with their existence. Um, because, you know, creation isn't really all that important in the grand scope of things. What's important is, like, following God and the laws and stuff. And there's a whole other debate on whether you should follow the Christian God because, you know, slavery and uh, all that. <laughs> but completely ignoring the philosophical arguments for now. Um, so, so in that line of thinking, uh, what about Jesus? If Jesus never existed, would you be able to reconcile, reconcile your faith? I said that like four times, I should just get to the point. I think you would be able to, and I think it would actually make more sense to be a Christian if Jesus never actually existed. Because uh, if Jesus was just a story, uh, and God still forgave people, um, if he was giving, I don't know, justification for forgiveness, because he's God, he can do whatever he wants, right? He doesn't have to have some justification to forgive people. He can forgive people because he's God, but he also has to be just, right? So maybe um, it's to get people to repent, and I, the, the, God can't lie. Well, according, I don't, according to my dad, <laughs> uh, God can't lie, right? I don't remember where it says that, but I'm pretty sure it says that somewhere. <laughs> don't quote me on that, though. Um, so let's assume that God can't lie. But Jesus used parables all the time, right? He used the, the pearl and the the you know sowing of the seeds and all that so maybe instead of jesus literally dying on the cross um, and that leading to the forgiveness of people god was like you know i've thought this through and people don't need to s literally sacrifice blood instead i will give up a part of myself to say you know to to allow you to be forgiven um I'll give up a part of my pride or a part of my a part of my law, right? Um, God doesn't change and all that. And then, the, so, so, arguments in favor of this, right? If Jesus never actually existed, then God never, you know, killed his son or himself. Trinity is weird. I should talk about the Trinity one of these days. Um, so, God, God never required a literal blood sacrifice, which is arguably far more moral than if, you know, he <laughs> literally killed his son just so everyone else could be forgiven. Of course, Jesus did it willingly, but he didn't want to do it, you know, praying, let this cup of suffering pass for me if it were possible and all that. Um, so I, w I would argue that it's far more moral. But also, then you come to the issue of why didn't God do it before, especially if God doesn't change, um, and, you know, all the other philosophical arguments with how not good God is. But <laughs> if you do really want to stick to hard science and hard history. Um, I think faith in God is still reconcilable, and in fact, I think it's far more valuable because scientific literacy is incredibly important. Because um, otherwise, you get, you know, astrology, <laughs> essential oils, stuff like that. Um, and uh, scientific literacy leads to better you know, society as a whole, um, as well as historical literacy, that's also incredibly important, um, as well as, you know, f a more philosophical thinking. Um, honestly, there's not really that many philosophical arguments I can give in favor of Christianity. There's just a lot against it that I can't really reconcile, like, you know, problem of evil and um, the interpretation argument and stuff like that. Though, this actually kind of strengthens the interpretation argument. If it's all a parable, and what really matters is following the laws, um, you know, don't love your neighbor as yourself and love God above everything else, if that's all that really matters, then it all being a parable, uh, you know, it, it makes a lot more sense. Uh, I don't know, this was just a random thought that came to mind when I was thinking about, like, how you could reconcile your faith while still sticking to hearts, or how, how atheists could promote scientific literacy within Christian communities uh, without... Because they would be far more willing to accept it. I would have been far more willing to accept it if it had been given to me in a lens like that. And of course, I don't think 
that this video I'm not gonna point anyone to this video to say see um, watch this if you want to understand uh, why you should be scientifically literate I, I would explain it then because this is obviously ge geared toward atheists so if you are a Christian I would love to hear your thoughts on this um, if you're an atheist I'd love to hear your thoughts on this <laughs> basically I'd like to hear your thoughts on this um, I hope you enjoyed thank you for watching uh, I don't remember what else I was going to say. Love you all. I don't know how to end this.